go to the bottom half of the second inning. It'll be Kittle followed by Baines and then Law. And a 1-1 tie. Shane Raleigh ready to go to work. There's the strike and the count is 0-1. Run at 260, 23 home runs and 65 RBI. Yes, they say. We have a lot of fun with that, and the response is starting to really roll in. And of course, we'll be held at the McCormick Inn on the first Tuesday of every homestead by the Sox. This time it'll be the Tigers, and guests from the Sox will be Davy Nelson and Rudy Law. count three and two. Now Shane Raleigh has been consistently high tonight and I don't believe that young man can pitch high can he? And he walked him high. Not too many guys can. You might can pitch high on a count but if you're going to go out there and just throw high fastballs unless you've got a uh, goose guys this time for Nolan Ryan type you can forget it. Well he's got his his body it appears his body is tossed over to the right side the third base side more so than I've ever seen him he is really up on top and he's always been he's always been a quick opener out there but still the point is is I hope he stays right there <laughs> I'll say they're going to get him if he does that's it to left center field Dave Winfield lots of room and that is out number one but pitching on the count high is a little bit different story. If you got a fellow out there like Raleigh who throws the slider, the curve ball, gets it down low and gets those hitters gearing down low on the 0 1, 0 2, 1, 2 count, then you might can sneak the fastball by him. But as a steady diet, no chance. A lot of times pitchers don't realize how far over to the side that they're actually getting, trying to get on top. And they pinch themselves off so much that they really don't get the type of movement on the ball or the velocity that they they really should have. As Vance Law stands in, takes outside, and not not joking about it, but believe it or not, for several years that's how I threw from the outfield, trying to get on top so bad I just did in fact pinch myself off, trying to get the ball straight and had no velocity out there. And finally Johnny McNamara, now the manager of the California Angels, spotted it, corrected it, and turned things around. But it can happen to anybody. Oh, it really can. There's the next pitch down low, 2 0. Oh. One of the Sox pitchers is doing that right now. You know what it is, too, is that mental image, Donnie. You, you know, you've got to have a mental image. And sometimes when you lose that mental image, you exaggerate it to a degree. And at that point, you are just actually blatantly having a wrong mechanical action out there. And Dang. somebody should spot it and tell you. Well, that's it. The whole thing is. Sometimes you can get so close to the forest you can't see the trees. That old syndrome. Yes, sir. But I'll guarantee you, you can you can see different things from different angles in a ballpark. And the thing is, you've got to move around to where you can see. Tries the bunt. Fouls it away, two and two. If he gets it down by Raleigh, he got himself a base hit because Nettles is playing deep. On deck, Scott Fletcher. Vance at 233, three and 28. There you see the right-hander, Dale Murray, in the bullpen. They'll give you a little bit of that Texas follow-through. <laughs> and he was throwing a knuckleball up there. Oh, he don't <laughs> throw one. A little low and it's three and two. Full count will keep an eye on Kittle. Outfield straight away deep. There goes Kittle. They got him picked off. They go to second base and they throw him out. Now Ronnie had a one way lead. Tony La Russa came out of the dugout very quickly, but Davy Nelson didn't say a word. He tried to get a one-way lead with a jump. 
Well, that's good if you can do it. You see him right there cut into the baseline trying to get in front of the throw. No chances. Mattingly, the left-handed throwing first baseman. Easy toss to Smalley for the out. At the right center, and it'll go to the wall. Wall will go to third as Mumphrey runs it down. Laws at third with a triple. We're getting back to that 3 2 pickoff right there. On that play is no sense in getting picked off. Can't get picked off. No sense in it. That's the cardinal rule. Well, what Ronnie did, he tried to cheat. When I talked about a one-way lead, he had a one-way one lead going back to the bag. As you see Law coming into third and for that stand-up triple. He had a one-way lead. He got a fairly good jump, but when I talk about a one-way lead, you can have a one-way lead going to the bag, meaning second base or back to the bag at first base, or just your weight distributed on both feet equally. He on that play, you don't want a one right lead. No. All you want is just a decent lead out there and move off, make sure the man goes to the plate. He's not trying to steal it, per se, but he had a one-way lead with his weight on his left foot, and then he tried to cheat a little and got caught with his hand in the cookie jar, that's all. Here's Scotty Fletcher at 313 with a home run and 20 RBIs, started the last five games, and he is just doing himself proud as you look at Vance Law at third. One hop, hit the nettle. From the grass, he'll throw him out, and the side is retired. So for the Sox, no runs, a hit, no errors, a man left, and after two, a 1-1 tie. There you see some scores in the first inning. Oh, the Angels pounding Oakland 7 to nothing. And in the second inning, Minnesota 1 to nothing over Seattle, Detroit. In the suspended game and the regular scheduled game, took two from Kansas City, 4-1-10-1. In the fifth inning, Baltimore 3-2 over Texas. Boston defeated Milwaukee 10-5, and Toronto over Cleveland 6-5. Now here's Andre Robertson hitting 263 with a home run and 18 RBI. a 1-1 tie through two complete in that first Detroit Kansas City game Baron Gare the winner 5 and 2 block the loser 4 and 4 Herndon is 12th and shared in his fifth home runs of the year at 35,100 at Tiger Stadium today second game Morris the winner 11 and 8 girl the loser 8 and 13 little low 3 and 0 oh. Walking Fuss hit his sixth, Lemonade his 15th, Perry hit his 14th, a grand slammer. And Sheridan again for Kansas City. There's a strike in the bottom of the fifth inning in that 3 to 2 Baltimore lead over Texas. Hostetler has hit his sixth for the Rangers. Smithson against McGregor. Strike two, and the count goes full three and two. And in the 10 5 victory over Montreal, or I should say over Milwaukee, Boston victory. Tudor, the winner, 9-6, and six, setting the loser, 7-7. Seven and seven. Molitor hit his 10th home run of the year, the first pitch. He hit right out of the ballpark. There's a high chopper to law third. The Peshorek went away. Good job by Dot falling behind 3-0 and oh, and talking about Raleigh last inning. Dotson's going to have to stop falling behind these Yankee hitters. So far, he's been 2-0, 2-1-3, 1-3-2 on everybody. But a reminder that Wednesday, August 3rd, when the Tigers are in town, a fun night at the ballpark is always, and this time you'll get a free cowboy hat. That's the first 5,000 fans, 21 and over, Will. They will receive that free Budweiser cowboy hat. For tickets, just dial Ticketmaster at 559-1212. That's Wednesday, August 3rd, against the Tigers' Budweiser cowboy hat night. Here's Don Mattingly, the first baseman. He takes a breaking pitch for the strike. He tripled up the alley in right center field his first time at bat, scored on the bouncing ball out by Weininger. The only Yankee run of the evening. A 1-1 tie. Down the left field line, slicing Kittle a ways to go. That's back out of play. the action 
One out in the top of the third. Foul out of play. 0-2. The count remains to Don Mattingly. Dotson already with 41 pitches, and that is a lot. Boy, that is a big thing that the Sox pitchers have done all year. They throw a lot of pitches. To the hole, and base hit right field. So Mattingly's two for two. Boy, that young man looks like he swings the bat pretty well. He's got a good range of motion up there. Very fluid. Waits on the ball nice. Keeps his hands back. He just got the curveball right there. Waited on it. Didn't hit it hard. Got out in front. Knocked it right between Pachorek and Cruz. But he is a good-looking young talent. Just 22 years old. Here's Butch Weininger, the catcher. Butch coming over from the Minnesota Twins a couple of years ago. Butch drove in the run, his 26 RBI. He just hit a ground ball to Bashorik, who had no other play but to step on the bag while Mattingly scored. Little low, the count, 1 0. Oh. Count two and zero. Oh. Two balls and no strike. Weininger will check with Don Zimmer at third. Little high. The count goes three and zero. Oh. No strikes to Weininger. On deck, Dave Winfield. And he walks him. Now Fisk out to talk to Dotson. Dave Winfield lined hard to Rudy Law his first time at bat and now action in the Sox bullpen. Juan Augusto gets up and starts to throw. Now Mattingly at second base with Weininger at first and Dave Winfield to stand in. Dave with a five-game hitting streak going for him. Leads the American League with 13 game-winning RBI. On deck, Greg Nettles. There's a strike, and the count is 0-1. As far back as Winfield stands, and I don't care how far he likes to extend his arm, he cannot cover the good strike down and away at the knee. Can't do it. Not too many guys can. No. And he can as big as he is, and as long as his arms are, he cannot reach it. We can get a shot of where that bat will cover the plate. There should be two. Fletcher to Cruz, and they double him up with ease. Second double play of the evening. And for the Sox, that is their 98th double play of the year. The Yankees are gone. No runs on a hit. They leave a man aboard. And after two and a half, it's a 1-1 one -one tie. Well, fans, there's nothing like coming out to see a White Sox game for exciting baseball action. But when you can't get to the game, get the game at home on Sports Vision. Sports Vision is a complete action package of professional and amateur sports featuring the Sox, Blackhawks, Bulls, and Sting. So don't miss out. Order Sports Vision today. Just call on TV at 699-6688 or call your local cable company. 
And our next televised Sox game will be tomorrow afternoon when our Sox host these same Yankees in the third game of this four-game set at 1 p.m. Be sure and join us for all the action and excitement of Sox Fest 83. Julio Cruz fouls the first pitch back out of the ballpark. Julio hitting 245, two home runs, 26 RBIs on the year. The Cubs have defeated Philadelphia 4-3 in the first of a doubleheader. Campbell the winner 3-6. and six. Hernandez the loser 4-4. Four and four. Ron Say with a game-winning RBI is 6th of the year. Smith picks up his 15th save. Julio has hit safely in four of his past five games and his last three in a row on deck Rudy Law. Pittsburgh has defeated the Mets 6-3. to three. There's the strike in the count. One and two. Scurry, the winner, four and seven. Stormy Eno was third save. Lynch took the loss, seven and five. Oh, the Pirates continue to roll. Got him looking, strike three, call. Just nailed that inside corner. You see Weiniger holding it right there, and Cruz trying to stick his rear end out, but that didn't have nothing to do with where the ball was, and Julio caught looking. And it'll bring on Rudy Law. He struck out his first time at bat. So Raleigh has taken care of the two speedsters by the Sox via the strikeout route. Slider low, the count 1-0. and oh. In other National League action, Houston had bat in the bottom of the second inning in a 1-1 tie. Dickie Thon, as I said before, is at his 14th home run for Houston. Ryan against Soto. 2-0 the count. Atlanta, San Diego. It'll be Nick Dravecki and the Giants this afternoon defeated the Dodgers in front of 40,330. Davis, a winner, 1-3. and three. Royce, the loser, 6-10. and ten. Brindley hit his sixth home run of the year. Two balls in a strike. And the next pitch in and over. The count goes even at two and two. So Atlanta, with a victory tonight, they can really pick up some breathing room. They can open up that National League West to six games. Luke Powell, the count remains two and two. The Dodgers starting tonight five games back, but only four in the uh, only three in the loss column. At five back, Houston ten and a half, San Diego twelve, San Francisco thirteen. That's foul. I tell you, the club that might make the biggest run of anybody will be the Houston Astros. They have been playing some great ball after getting off to a horrendous start. They hit right field. Rudy Law's aboard. Now let's listen to Davey Nelson. Okay. Right here now. He doesn't want you to go. All right. You got the basketball, so he can go deep. Yes. All right. You got the little Michael. <laughs> Surprise me, Law. Michael White told me you had the Michael. Yeah. Okay. You know what we talked about about on his move now. Just some of the excitement of being on the base pass, that's all. <laughs> yeah, and realistically speaking, Carlton can go deep. And Fisk will be the hitter. 19 home runs and 59 RBIs on the year. On deck, Tom Fishort. The way Carl went at that one, he might be the only one that doesn't know that Tony doesn't want Rudy to run. We better put one of those mics on Carlton. A <laughs> <Our> receiver. <laughs> oh, and one the count. There you see the numbers on Rudy Law. 48 for 55. Ask 
welcome to turn up that mic a little bit on Davey Nelson right now because this will be interesting for all of you young base runners at home and future coaches. Back, back, back. There you go. Well, that one right there didn't exactly take a, a lot of education. <laughs> back, back, back. Up by there, base hitting now. Well, you can hear. But you'll hear, see how quickly Davy can pick it up to help the runner. And strike two call, low on two. One down, Rudy. Just watch the line drive now. Just outside, and the count, one ball and two strikes. Infield double play depth. Back, back, back. Now you can see very quickly Davy Nelson before that Raleigh ever even started to Turn the shoulder to get over there. Was yelling back, back. Got him on a good fastball. There's a high count fastball right there. That's one you can. That's like you one you talking. can throw it That's right, right there. You get them 0-2-1-2, then you can get that high fastball by him, the strong hitter. They just gearing down a little bit low mentally, and all of a sudden they just can't get up on top of that high heart one. There's a pitch out and not a good one. Or whether that was a breaking ball that just got away from him. No, <laughs> that was just a bad pitch out. Wow. short doubled in the alley and drove in his 34th run of the year to account for the White Sox run of the evening the Yankees got a run in the first and the Sox came right back and got one of their own one and one to count on deck Greg Luzinski Well, you're good pitchers who are not overpowering as Raleigh is not overpowering. Say a guy like Scott McGregor at Baltimore. Of course, the whole Baltimore staff, over the 23 years I've seen them pitch, they have pitched high, but they do it in the count. There goes the runner, and there's a line drive backhanded by Smalley. They won't get him. That'll be a base hit for for short. Law stops at second base. Tommy just out in front of it. Catches it right on the end of the bat. As Rudy was gone, there's the breaking ball from Raleigh. Roy just couldn't get anything on the ball, that's all. I don't care if he could right there. He's going to throw uh, Tommy out on that one, that deep in the hole. Here is Luzinski. Good play by Mattingly. He was watching Law. It was right in front of him. He just said, well, I'll just stay right here on the bag on this ball. For sure, it might fall down. And if Law wants to go to third, oh. just go up and catch it. Woo, did he have a good swing? Oh, that's what you call a heck of a ripple right there. Bolo for one tonight. A little check swing ground out to Mattingly. Robertson, second baseman, cheating a lot to his right. That is fouled out of play. And the count one and two. One ball and two strikes again with Ron Kittle on deck. Texas at bat in the top of the sixth with Baltimore leading three to two. 
A little high to count two and two. Seattle four to one over Minnesota. And that is in the bottom of the third. Just inside and a full count. The runners will be going. You're going to go up. You've got to get it in a good spot. And they almost had him picked off. They had to play it first, but I don't know whether Mattingly knew it. He didn't. He did not know. Now Kaiser's going to call a box. Sir, they're calling for it right here. Kaiser's calling a box. Now, the thing is that Mattingly is supposed to be moving to the bag. You cannot throw to a stationary fielder. And Billy Martin is saying that he was going there. They said they got a pickoff play on. And I believe Ken Kaiser, Billy Martin is going to be living. You can't throw behind the runner to a stationary target. Now Ken Kaiser calls the ball. I'm taking it in front of the runner to the space area. Look at Billy. <laughs> He's hot. <laughs> He's hot. Let's take another look at him. Play his own. Now watch Mattingly. He will be moving in just a step right here to the bag. Well, that's an awfully close call right there. I would say Kaiser's right. Here's the 3 2 pitch. Struck him out, and he got it in a good spot. So the Sox are gone. No run, two hits, no errors, and two men left after three of one one time. Back at Comiskey Park in front of a sellout crowd, along with Ken Harrelson, I'm Don Drysdale, and happy you've joined us tonight. Game number two of this four-game series, the White Sox and the New York Yankees. The White Sox winning last night, and tonight it's a one-one tie through three. And, of course, our next TV game here on Sports Vision will be tomorrow afternoon as you look at the Goodyear blimp up above. Tomorrow afternoon, 1 o'clock, Central Daylight Time, Dave Rigetti, hard-throwing left-hander, Britt Burns, hard-throwing left-hander. We go to the fourth, and to call it for you, here's Kent. All right, Donnie, Greg Nettles will lead it off. He'll be followed by Oscar Gamble and then right fielder Steve Kemp. Well, they just put the Sox stuff on the board tonight, and only one Sox catcher in history has hit 20 or more home runs in a season, and he did it twice. Who is it? One three and 0 for the Yankees, one four and 0 for the Sox, says Nettle takes the ball. Greg drew a walk back in the first inning, one of two issues thus far by Dotson. He has yet to strike out a Yankee batter. Second of the four game set. That's out of play left side, one and one to count. And last night, just a very solid effort by Jerry Kuzman and his teammates as they beat the Yankees seven to two before 40,455. There'll be more in the house tonight. Outfield punched up a little bit for Nettles as he takes a little low and it's two and one. Once again, that Sox suffer is only one Sox catcher in their history. Is it 20 home runs or more in a year? And he did it twice. Who is he? We'll give you the answer after Nettles. There's a change outside. And Dotson once again falling behind in the count. This time it's three and one. That's just going to be a matter of time. He keeps doing that. Yankees are tough on right-handed pitchers. Now for sure, it's going to change from Dotson, picks it up, and there's one gone. Well, the answer to that quiz, Sherm Lawler, he had 20 back in 1958, and he hit 22 in 1959. Well, a reminder that the days of buying an inferior seat to a Sox game at a remote outlet are over thanks to Ticketmaster. Now you can buy the best seat available at the ballpark at any one of 35 Ticketmaster centers located in Sport Mart, Rose Records, Baskin Clothing, and Carson Perry Scott stores. And, of course, if you can't get out of the house, you can charge your tickets to your Visa or MasterCard 
by calling Ticketmaster 559-1212. Oscar Gamble, the designated hitter, 33-year-old veteran, bounced out 5-3 to three as Dotson just sawed him off. That was the end of the first inning. Takes the ball. Hits him in that left thigh, and it's 2 0. Yankees have been playing good baseball. They've won four out of their last five, 11 of their last 13. Sox have won four out of their last five. Just threw it right by him. That is not Oscar's zone on a 2 0 count. Let's see, Oscar with that open stance he's just taken one step towards first and open it's in that zone not a good swing by Gamble and it's two balls two strikes that that man right there has won six of his last seven the last 11 times he's been out to the mound Sox have won nine times 21 this year against New York three and three lifetime Little comebacker. Easy play for Dotson. And quickly, two out. So he falls behind Nettles, three and one. Falls behind Gamble, two and oh. Gets them both. Here's Steve Kemp. Had a base hit. In the hole between short and third. First time up. Kemp now hitting 265 to go along with nine homers and 41 knocked in. Rocks outfield bunching a lot of these Yankee left-handed hitters. A little high, the count goes 3 and 0. Oh. No strikes to Weininger. On deck, Dave Winfield. And he walks him. Now Fisk out to talk to Dotson. Dave Winfield lined hard to Rudy Law's first time at bat and now action in the Sox bullpen. Juan Augusto gets up and starts to throw. Got him. So Dotson for the first time in the ball game, one, two, three inning. Nothing across for New York, and after three and a half, it's a one-one tie. Yes, sir, Tony LaRusso, you got that right. The United Way. But right here, bottom of the fourth, it'll be Kittle, Baines, and Vance Law to face Shane Raleigh in a 1 1 tie. Up high. Ronnie drew a walk back in the second. And then was picked off, caught stealing. On the 3 2 count to Vance Law. 1 and 1. And we want to congratulate the Imperial Youth Band who before the game really put on a nice show for all the fans. Of course, that band out of Chicago right here was Frank Manna, the director. Ball and two strikes to Kittle. That's good fastball right there. Not a reminder about True Value Sox baseball card night. That's every Tuesday night home game. The first 15,000 fans to attend every Tuesday night Sox game will receive two free Sox player cards, two different cards every game. And that's courtesy of True Value Hardware Stores. The next one is Tuesday, August 2nd against the Tigers. Harrell went out to Winfield. First time up. Takes the ball. And as we mentioned last night on the radio side, a lot of groups in attendance. 
And if you want to come out in one of those groups, of course, as the count now two and one. So White Sox group sales at 924-1000. That's for a group sale representative. But some of the groups in attendance tonight, a group of 44 from Chapman Supermarket in South Bend. A group of 100 from Bobby May Can Club in Berwyn. A group of 94 from Imperial Travel Service in Lafayette, Indiana. And, of course, a group of 152 from the McCormick Inn right here in Chicago. Full count to Bain. Side corner, Baines doesn't like it. Fifth strikeout for Shane Raleigh, and there's two out. Well, a close pitch right here, and in the eyes of home plate umpire Dale Ford, it was a strike. Breaking pitch right there. I think Harold had a good beat, but he's gone, and here's Vance Law. Had a two out triple in the second, his fourth three bagger of the year. Also before the game, Chuck Mangione played the national anthem on a very talented trumpet of his. So a lot of fun here at the ballpark. Now we just got to get some runs on that board. Two balls in the strike. Jack's a good baseball fan. I was talking to him prior to the game. He's I said, well, you're going to play the National Anthem tonight? He said, yeah, he said, I had to get in the ballpark some way. <laughs> Change up. He went around. And it's two and two. Yeah, he's been around the American League at several of the parks we have been to play that National Anthem. Loves it. Big Yankee fan. Well, what a job he did on the music up at Lake Placid in the Winter Olympics. Little chopper and nettles right over the back. Fair ball. Now guns it not in time as Law beats it out. Greg laying back just a bit on that one. So Vance Law two for two. Well, Greg laid back because he had no chance to try and come in on the ball. He's going to find himself getting caught up and tied up with third base if he tries to short off it. He laid back, tried to get in position. Ball was not hit that hard to start with, and then after that he just couldn't get a grip on it. Threw it and ball within the palm of his hand, and Law is going to beat it anyway. All those reasons make for an infield hit. Yeah, I put an S down on my book. Single, Scott Fletcher. <laughs> Happy birthday to Scotty today. 25 years old. 25. Wow. What were you doing on your 25th birthday? I was in Kansas City playing against these same ball clubs. You just got to make sure. The New York Yankees on September 4th, 1977. High pop up left field. Winfield's there. He'll get it. That'll retire the side. So nothing across for the Sox. There was a hit a man left. After four, it's a 1-1 one -one tie. Right now, let's go back to see some Red Sox, Brewer highlights, and Dick Gunsky in the studio. All right, Richard, there you see the Oakland A's have come back. They put four on the board in the third, and after three, it's seven for Angel. Gary Hancock is homers for Oakland in that one. That's the first of a doubleheader. In the fifth, 4-1 Mariners. And there you see the 4-3. Rangers leading Baltimore now in the seventh. Of course, you just saw the highlights of the Red Sox Milwaukee game in the final. Toronto beat Cleveland six to five. In the National League, it was the Cubbies over the Phils four to three. In the seventh, St. Louis three, Montreal one. Buccos rolled as they beat New York six to three. In the fourth, one one, no score. Later on, Atlanta at San Diego in the final. Giants over the Dodgers, 8-zip. But right here, top of the fifth inning, Roy Smalley to lead it off. It'll be Smalley, Mumphrey, and Robertson in a 1-1 tie. That Cub victory over the Phils. Campbell a winner, 3-6. Hernandez a loser, 4-4. Four four. Ryan Say a double for the game-winning RBI. That's his sixth game-winning hit of the year. Ball and no strikes to Smalley. 
Ken Kaiser just made the call and looked over in that sock dugout. Now, who wants to say something? That ball coming back up in the Budweiser sweep and out of the Budweiser sweep. In and out. Boy, I'll tell you one thing. I'm going to have to find a way to spend a game in that Budweiser suite. I went over there this afternoon. I'm telling you, they're living. Ball and two strike. Of course, when we well, said nine before. stop for nine innings, I'll tell you this. Said before, when you put the name Budweiser on it, you got something good, and that booth is awfully good. <laughs> you don't have to go to that luxury suite over there to enjoy that. <laughs> One three and zero for New York. One five and zero for the Sox. Now Steel. Now Law moves a couple of steps to his right. As Kittle has room, plenty of it. One gone. Now Sports Vision, the exclusive sports pay television service, is now available through Rockford Cable Vision, serving the communities of Rockford and Loves Park. To order Sports Vision, call Rockford Cable Vision, area code eight one five nine eight seven four five one zero. Here's the Yankee center fielder. Hit into a 6-4-3 double play his first time up. Sox have turned two tonight. They now have 98 on the year. Number one. Steinbrenner's best friend. <laughs> he ain't quite a guy. I think he's the best. Fastball misses. Ball on a strike to Mumphrey. But managers are no different than ball players. They have good years. They have bad years. There's a change. See that one coming before he releases. It. And it's two and one. But when Billy is into it, there's none better is a better way to put it. That little looper off the end of the bat. Base hit. So Mumphrey, one for two, one out base runner. Now this is the kind of pennant race I think where Billy excels because he doesn't have to worry only about a club in front of him. He's got to worry about a club tied with him, a club that's maybe a game behind him, and he's in the thick of a four-five team pennant race. And I'll tell you, that little guy, he knows an awful lot about baseball. And you look out at California right now, in the bottom of the fourth inning at 7-5 when the Angels had a 7 to nothing lead. They blow a couple more games like they've had, like a 13 to 11 game, a Tiger victory last week, and somebody's liable to jump off the second deck. Here's the second baseman, Andre Robertson. That somebody's going to be Bavese. Fastball inside. Come right out of that box he's got at the big A. Mumphrey just two steals this year. Now feel short. Chopper. Foul. Ball on a strike. California, four games under that 500 mark with a record of 48 and 52. Four and a half back going into tonight's action. Oakland, seven and a half back. They are 10 games under. And of course, our Sox, five games over, 52 and 47. As it stands right now, three and a half games in front of the Kansas City Royals and the Texas Rangers. Well, Kenny, the big thing about it, you get a club that goes bad right now, say, till the middle of August, they're out of it. In a, in a cavalry charge, they are not going to be able to get back in it. they got too many clubs to overcome. According to how, how bad you're talking about going. Well, I'm talking about you get... You get seven, eight games like that back in the middle of August, and you've got three, four clubs to try and catch, you got no chance. Well, from what we've seen the last two years, we have not seen any club in the American League West play any kind of consistent baseball. We've seen that they could go through maybe three bad streaks and still have a shot at it. Hopefully, that's why the Sox can go ahead and get this thing done because of the pitching staff they have. him up right side. The Shark now calling for it. Fisk now wanting it, and Tommy takes it. 
Tommy says, I got it. Thank you. Carlton says, OK. That's where you got to keep yelling, yelling, yelling. Even Dotson could have got over there a little bit better than where he was. That's all he's got to do. As you look at for short, make the catch over the glove of fifth. There's no reason the pitcher has to stay on the mound or just make the call and play traffic cop as long as it's on the infield, on the field of play. You can go over into foul territory. Nothing says you can't do that. Here's Don Mattingly, first baseman. He has triple, scored the only Yankee run. That was in the first, and he had a single in the third. couple of steps over towards Kittle. Baines off the line and right. Fastball up high, 1-0. and oh. Mattingly now hitting 312 since being called up from Columbus. in tomorrow's games it'll be a couple of more southpaws Britt Burns for the Sox and Dave Rigetti for New York Burns five and six Rigetti 11 and three pitch out nothing on and it's two and oh then in the finale on Monday night it'll be Floyd Bannister seven and nine against Ray Fontenot who is three and oh and Bannister of course since the all-star break is four and oh so that left-hander starting to come alive. There goes the runner. Throw by fifth. They got him, I think. Yep. Got him right on the money. Excellent throw by Carlton Fifth. And that'll do it for the Yankees. Nothing across. There was a hit. Nobody left. And after four and a half, a 1-1 one -one tie. Top and bottom of the fifth inning. Julio Cruz to lead it off. Left-hander Shane Raleigh on the mound. Cruz 0 for 1. Caught looking his first time up. There's a shot by Nettles, who was playing it on the grass and the Sox with excellent speed aboard here in the fifth. That's way to go now. You're on your own now. When he, when he looks over here, he, he starts his delivery. He comes on over here. His shoulder comes and his head looks right at you. And when he's going home, he looks right at home, but he sees his delivery up. Here first base, Coach Davey Nelson with a little helpful hint right there to Julio Cruz about the move of the left-hander Shane Raleigh. Cruz, 45 stolen bases and 54 attempts. And here's Rudy Law. Law struck out and single. Cruz on his own right now. Uh-oh, Nettles coming in. He'll make it. Well, there's a great play by Greg Nettles. That man can play that third base as well as anybody you've ever seen. Bunt attempt, bad bunt, and Nettles charging. How many times have you seen that man just thrown to the ground and come up with a great play? He's been a thoroughbred. So now there's one out, and here's Carlton Fisk. And a reminder about Monday night's game on your schedules, it says the 7.30 start, but that game will start at 7.15 because it will be the primary game on ABC. So it's 15 minutes early. Better mark that down on your calendar for Monday night, and also this half-price family bargain night. Instead of 7.30, it'll be 7.15. Forty-six thousand two hundred nineteen. High for the year. Forty thousand four fifty-five last night, and big crowds expected tomorrow and Monday. Well, 
So for tomorrow and Monday, the Sox going to provide free amphitheater parking at the 42nd Halstead Street. There will also be free shuttle bus service to and from Comiskey Park from the amphitheater. Pitch outside, one and one to count. And for tomorrow's game, the shuttle bus service will begin at 11 a.m. And for Monday night's game, that shuttle bus service will start at 6 p.m. the fifth, one out. Ball on a strike to fifth. Cruz at first. Seven to four. Rangers has taken the lead in the top of the seventh on a two-run homer by Dave Hostetler, his second of the game, his seventh of the season. And the birds came right back to put a four spot on them. So after seven, it's Oriole seven, Rangers four. Lord Baltimore is playing some great baseball, Kenny. They are just they're relentless. They will not give you any kind of a break. Ball couldn't get it, and it's one and two. It takes some discipline at the plate right here. If you're a man following any kind of a base runner with the speed of a law or cruise, all of their dancing around and drawing throws, I tell you, can make it awfully tough on that man standing at the plate. And in this case, Carlton Fisk. Time was called, no pitch. Well, he's handled it well, hitting about 370 in that second spot. Nineteen homers, fifty-nine RBI. Outside with a fastball, and it's two and two. Sometimes that's just what the doctor ordered. When you take a guy who's been struggling, and all of a sudden you get him because of the responsibility of having to protect that runner in the second spot. Move the ball to the opposite field. You get his mind off mechanics. somebody there who understands first of all what it's all about which he does next of all as you mentioned Donald you got to have somebody there who is disciplined but even more than that you got to have somebody who can execute misses the inside corner and fist waits him out and the count goes to the wall three and two puts on Cruz here. Here's another case, same way, where Kittle or Cruz, they just got to make sure he comes to the plate. Now you, you do one of two things. You got to get the sign and make a quick delivery to the plate, or you got to make a sign and give that good move to first base, not the one he just gave. There he goes. He walks him. Cruz at second, Fisk at first, one out, and here comes Tom Pashorek, who is two for two. Hey, right here now, you, it's a tough situation right here with one out. You know, he's, he's on his own to steal third base, so like I said, if you don't, he's going to be playing behind you, but if, he, if you don't get a break, you just stay right here then. Because there's all that thing about a false break, he may try to break, you know, and then... If he breaks and stop, and you break. I'll tell you what, you're going to be thinking more about those pitches. I'll tell you what, you gotta, that's something you got to throw the ball over the plate. Yeah. You can't ring me up when I'm pitching. The ball's going to get there. Billy giving Shane Raleigh the 
devil right there. Well, he, I think he's waiting for home plate umpire Dale Ford to come out. Billy right here is going to bring him out here. He's bringing him out here to talk. Yeah. He's going to be directing his conversation, Reggetti. Now, Dale Ford made the mistake of coming out there and saying something. He's got to go. <laughs> and Billy says, I'm telling my man just how bad you are, that's all, and not to let it bother him, because I can't tell you how bad you are, because if I tell you how bad you are, you're going to kick me out of the game. So I can only tell my man how bad you are. But there's a few other adjectives thrown in there. <laughs> so here's Mashurik. Tommy has doubled in the only Sox run in the first inning, had an infield single in the third. Grab all right side. That's a base hit. Here comes Cruz. He's going to score. Fisk on his way to third. Now Mashurik on his way to second. He gets there. Everybody safe. And the Sox lead it two to one. Just a good piece of hitting right here by Tom Pashorik, who can use the whole ballpark. Look at him go the other way. Big hole on that right side. That's by Mattingly. Cruz sees it goes through. He scores with ease. Fisk on his way to third, and Billy Martin to the mound, and that's going to be all for Raleigh. Also, Tom Pasturic never stopping after he saw Kemp throw in. He went on to second base, so a break in the action. It'll be the right-hander, Dale Murray, coming on, and we'll tell you about him when we return. Dale Murray comes on to take over the pitching chores, making his 26th appearance of the year, a record of 2-1. A 4.58 earned run average. He's worked in 59 innings, allowed 72 hits, 36 runs, 30 earned. He has walked 11 and struck out 28. Big right-hander out of Cuero, Texas. He's 33 years old, 6'4", 205 pounds, originally in the Montreal Expo organization. And going over to the Cincinnati Reds, New York Mets, back to Montreal, and went down to Denver. Syracuse, Toronto, and coming over to New York from the Blue Jays. So a well-traveled veteran. And he comes on here in the bottom of the fifth. Sox have just taken the lead two to one. They have Fisk at third. Tom Pashorik at second, one out, and here's Greg Luzinski. Yankee infield in. Outfield deep, spread out, straight away. Jams in, pops him up. Winfield. Got a gun out there. Fisk tagging. Winfield getting a position. Here comes Carlson to throw. Not in time. A 3-1 ball game. Boy, Luzinski just muscled that ball out there. The ball, you see, got it off the end of the bat. Now Fish knows that he is going to have to hurry. Winfield didn't get the best position that he could. He caught it on the wrong side, then had to turn around and come back. And it was very close to the plate as Fisk had to go hard all the way. You're going to be an outfielder. Whoop. Kittle right to Kemp. He hauls it in, and that'll retire the side. But the Sox break the tie, coming up with two runs on uh, two hits. No errors, a man left, and after five, there it is.
reminder that All-Star Beach Town Night. That'll be Friday, August 12th against Baltimore. The first 15,000 fans, 15 and over, receive a free, high-quality All-Star Beach Towel. That's courtesy of Clorox Bleach. For tickets, you can call Ticketmaster at 559-1212 and use your charge card. Right-hander Richard Dotson has just been given a two-run lead in the bottom of the fifth inning. And going to the sixth, it'll be the top of the order for the Yankees, Don Mattingly, Butch Weiniger, and Dave Winfield. Mattingly tripled, and he has scored the only Yankee run. That was in the first, and he singled in the third. And he was at the plate when Jerry Mumphrey was caught stealing on a great throw by Carlton Fifth. Mattingly. Dotson's thrown a lot of pitches out there tonight. For the most part, he has been behind in the count of the Yankee hitters, but has escaped relatively unscathed. Change. Pops up. Vance has got to go hard. Good effort. Just couldn't get there. One and two the count. If you can, and you're going along parallel to the wall, Kenny, that is a good way, I think, what Law did down there, where you can kind of hit that wall, spin and turn, and get your body momentum going out and back onto the field, not to where you're going to be tangling up with that box seat railing. Another change, with some low and away, and it's two balls, two strikes. To do that, you're fighting a losing proposition. You're not going to win a whole bunch of them. Second strikeout by Dotson. Valley's slowly but surely getting and regaining the form on the change. And he's got to do that to keep the hitters off stride. And that time he did it perfectly. Here's a 27-year-old catcher, Butch Weiniger. 0 for 1, drove in the only Yankee run in the first on the ground out, walked in the third. Much more effective this year from the left side, hitting at 352 from the right side, 261. Yankees is a team hitting 276. Curveball in and over, and it's one and one. And that is first in the American League. And their 387 team ERA is fifth in the league. That is a shot. Raw has to hold up, take it on the first hop. So Weiniger went for two. That's the fifth hit given up by Dotson. And that's also a heads-up play by Rudy Law. If he comes on and that ball gets by him on that tough outfield right now after the two concerts, you never know where Weiniger might end up. Dave Winfield. Lined hard to law in the first, hit into a 6-4-3 double play in the third as Dotson just ate him up inside with a fastball. Top of the eighth now at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore, Orioles 7, Rangers 4. And in case you just tuned in, the Tigers beat Kansas City in a pair today at Tiger Stadium, 4-1. to one. And in that suspended game from last night, 10-1. to one. Should be another double play right here. Easy one, 6-4-3. Third of the game turned by the Sox, and that'll take the Yankees out of the street. Nothing is tossed, and after five and a half, it's the Sox leading in the second of this four-game set, three to one. The Oakland A's have just tied up the California Angels after trailing seven to nothing. 
In the bottom of the sixth now at Anaheim, California, it's a 7-7 seven, seven tie. But right here, bottom of the sixth inning before 46,219, the largest crowd of the season by far. The Sox lead it 3-1. It'll be Baines, Vance Law, and Scott Flesher to face the right-hander, Dale Murray. Murray came on last inning in relief of Shane Raleigh, the starter. Sox with three runs on seven hits, no errors. New York, a run on five hits, no errors. And Baines, 0 for 2 tonight. Misses the outside corner. Yankees get on the board in the very first inning. Leadoff triple by Don Mattingly, the first baseman. He was knocked in by Butch Weiniger. There's a strike. One and one to count. And the Sox came back in the bottom of the first inning. Fisk, a walk. And Tom Pashurik knocked him in with a double. For Tommy, his 34th RBI of the year. Ball and two strikes to Bain. And Sox taking up two more in the bottom of the fifth. Lead off single by Julio Cruz, and Rudy Law attempted to bunt, popped up to medals in foul territory, a walk to fifth. Pashurik with a single, knocking in Cruz. Fifth going to third, Pashurik in the second, and a sacrifice by by Greg Luzinski. For the Bull, that was his 57th RBI of the year. Two balls, two strikes to Bain. Good hack. Good swing. Harrell having a tough time career-wise against Yankee pitching, hitting at just 262 coming in with one home run and only 12 RBIs. there got one of the easier fouls they'll have all season and just flat booted it. <laughs> That's it hard to left field. Winfield playing deep. He's there on the track. One gone. Sox averaging 21,546 coming into the night. So that'll go up at least a couple of hundred. On the average slate, and big crowds expected tomorrow and Monday night. And once again, that Monday night game is going to start 15 minutes earlier. Not at 7.30, but at 7.15. Also, there are still some 5,000 reserve seat tickets and 9,000 general admission tickets still available for the game. That's tomorrow. And also, at jacket day as Vance Law steps in. And for Monday, there are 6,000 reserve seats season uh, seat ticket and 9,000 general admission as a count one and one to that. So 5,000 reserved for tomorrow and 9,000 general admission for tomorrow. And for Monday evening, 6,000 reserved and 9,000 general admission. And of course, every day there will be at least 9,000 tickets held back for you so you'll have a chance to see. Two balls and a strike to law. Now that last pitch by Dale Murray, just a little high and inside, that's all, as Law had to get out of the way. That really wasn't a no. fastball. I don't know what that pitch was that he tried to throw up there. Looked like he was trying to throw a screwball up there. Not that close anyway. Two balls and a strike. To right field, Kemp got a late start, now going back. And can't make the play. One hop into the stands. The ground rule double for Vance Law. Kemp with a bad jump. Couldn't get there. Now well, the ball went right through his hand. Now that ball's hit harder than Kemp thought it was. He got a bad start. Now he turns the wrong way here. Has to turn back. And he just flat missed it. He's turned the wrong way. Now he turns around. He can catch that ball, and he then never got a glove on it. <laughs> Here's Scott Fletcher. 
Scotty 0 for 2. Makes a strike right on the inside corner. Quickly two strikes to Fletcher. Sox with three runs on eight hits, no errors. The Yankees one run on five hits, no errors. Sox took the opener last night, seven to two, behind Jerry Kuzman's eighth victory of the year. Kuz now eight and two in the season. Gidry, the loser, is 12 and six. Fisk with a home run. Luzinski with a home run. And for the Yankees, it was Winfield and Mumphrey. Up high, ball and two strikes. hanging tough over by the camera well that remains one and two a final from Baltimore Baltimore seven Texas four Baltimore seven. Orioles have defeated the Rangers seven to four Rangers in the throes of a losing streak The shot, base hit. Vance had to hold up to see if Smiley was going to catch it. He'll hold it third. So Fletcher won for three. Sox runners at the corners, just one out. And here comes Julio Cruz. Now that little man has been swinging a hot bat. Hit that ball right in the button. Smiley did not get a good break on the ball, but he wouldn't have got there anyway. Kind of bending that left knee a little bit. Billy Martin, a little anxious down there in the Yankee dugout as there is George Frazier. He's getting loose in a hurry. And Martin out of that Yankee dugout, he wants people halfway. Trying to bring Robertson in a little bit. Going to be tough man to double up. He says, get in here. Somebody get in here. <laughs> Fletcher down his last 22 at bat, 11 base hit. Cruz tonight, one for two. Foul. Now here's a case right here, Kenny, where you've got to go one way or the other if you're Andre Robertson. Of course, he's a little out of position at second base. He's generally the shortstop. He's trying to cheat and play close to the bag should there be a ground ball double play to the left side. But now they're going to pitch it. That's right. And there's a big hole out. out there. And Murray has the certainly the experience to do that. Then he's playing all right. If he's not, if he makes a mistake, then he's playing bad. Well, if you're looking at if you're Julio Cruz, you've got to turn and look over at that right side. Infield oh, in with yeah. a hole that big. you got to say, if I've ever pulled, it's going to be here. Well, he's better off if he's going to try to do that rather than go out and pull the ball. He's rather go out and just get it and lay it down. Nothing in one, two, two. We may have lost Davy Nelson's mic that we had working through the first half of the game. But right there, he's just going to be telling him, don't get picked off. Watch the line drive. Make it go through. Pitch out, nothing on. striking out. Nettles at the cut of the grass. Left field, Winfield. This is going to be deep enough. Vance Law tags. Winfield goes to second. Law scores, and the Sox lead it 4-1. to one. For Cruz, his 27th RBI of the season. At 
ball carrying well to left field tonight. Of course, the breeze is blowing out to left. Now watch the sinker up and away. And boy, they will do all kinds of things. That chase Dave Winfield back far enough for Law to score. Fletcher very lately was tagging at first. Winfield knowing that he didn't have a chance to get Law, he just went to second. Rudy Law, 31 for three. Had a third inning single. meeting of the year between these two teams. They have split the first six. Zox have won two out of three here at Comiskey Park. The Yankees have won two out of three at Yankee Stadium. Last year, the Sox played the Yankees very tough. In 12 meetings, Sox won eight times. Fletcher, good speed. Pitch misses, and it's one and one. Top of the seventh now at California. Oakland seven, Angels seven. Angels scoring seven times in the very first inning, and Oakland just kept battling back. Easy play. And over to Mattingly, and that'll do it. But the Sox put one more on the board. And after six, it's a 4-1 Sox lead. All right, Dick Gonski, top of the seventh, and that's the score. And we want to remind you, our next televised scene game will be this coming Friday when the scene kick off against the Rowdies in Tampa Bay at 7 p.m. So be sure and join Howard Balson and Kenny Stern as they bring you all the action and excitement of outdoor soccer, both home and away. That's Friday night, the Sting and the Rowdies right here on Sports Vision, your box seat ticket to exciting Chicago area sports at home. Right here with Don Drysdale, I'm Ken Harrelson. Sox leading 4-1. 4 9 for the Sox, 1-5-0 for the Yankees in the college park. One ball and no strikes to Nettles. Center field, and that will be the base hit. Now Greg is aboard, that is the sixth hit for the Yankees tonight. Dodson has had them all scattered. No more than one hit in an inning. One in the first, one in the second, one in the third, one in the fifth, one in the sixth. Now one here in the seventh. And Oscar Gamble comes on. He has bounced to third and bounced back to Dodson. Juan Augusto throwing in the bullpen again. That's the third time that he's been up. Augusto started early, was up last inning, and now up for the third time here in the seventh. On that inside corner, Gamble doesn't like it. Augusto, the left-hander on the right of your screen, and Salome Barojas, the right-hander on the left of your screen. 4-9-0 for the Sox, 1-6-0 for the Yankees. Gamble... Taking a little time as he was not happy with that last call by home plate umpire Dale Ford. Oscars 0 for 2 tonight, starting tonight at 307. Now down to 301. Just outside and the count one and one. Dotson is still throwing very good. Side Fletcher could be two. Cruz on the first, not in time. Well, those two little guys can turn it. That ball, when it started out, if it didn't take that high hop, it appeared it might be a base hit to the left side. But Scott Fletcher moving over in a hurry. Look at that throw to Cruz and the off balance throw. And they just did beat it at first. Julio. Bouncing around out there like a jack-in-the-box. So there's one out, one on. And Steve Kemp will stand in. He has singled, and he has struck out. Steve 
just inside and the count one and oh numbers on Rich Dotson tonight six and a third innings allowed a run on six hits walk two struck out two and 90 pitches good change Kemp coming right out from underneath his helmet Seattle on top of Minnesota seven to three in the bottom of the eighth inning in Minneapolis still seven seven tie in the top of the seventh at California Oakland and the Angels Detroit 10 to 1 over Kansas City this afternoon that was the finishing of the game last night Toronto defeated Cleveland six to five and 13 just outside Boston over minute uh, check that Boston over Milwaukee 10 five this afternoon at Fenway and Baltimore has defeated Texas seven to four and the other game Detroit four to one over Kansas City so in essence the Royals down two. Uh, a win here for the Sox tonight can do them a lot of good check swing fouled away two and two the count on the National League side the Giants shut out the Dodgers eight to nothing this afternoon the Cubs one to nothing over Philadelphia in the second game of the doubleheader. That's in the bottom of the third in Philly. Cubbies winning the first game four to three. St. Louis has defeated Montreal three to two. Just outside with a change. Atlanta will be at San Diego tonight. That'll be starting. Well, it's just underway. And Pittsburgh over the New York Mets six to three this afternoon. And good news for the Sting fans as they beat the Cosmos two to one. And that's Willie Roy's 100th career win as a Sting coach. Full count. Change foul back. On deck, Roy Smalley. First, Sox on top four to one. We're in the top of the seventh. A little high, and he walks him. Now that will bring on Roy Smalley. Roy tonight has flied to left twice, and with a four to one lead, Smalley will represent the tying run standing at the plate with Jerry Mumphrey on deck. Both of them switch hitters. Dotson has Gamble at second and he has Kemp at first infield double play depth change in and over Roy coming into tonight's game hitting 272 10 home runs 31 RBIs and a little rain starts to fall Umbrellas pop out. That change nicely thrown in and over. Smalley doesn't care for the call. You see a few of the raindrops coming down. Look up through there on the camera is a little bit harder than what it actually is. Breeze has turned around and switched. It is blowing out to right. Owen to the count. In the dirt, and Gamble will go to third, Kemp to second. Now, Dotson trying to aim that pitch and Fisk a little unhappy with himself that that ball got away. He knew it was going to be a bad pitch and he could not corral it.
That'll be a wild pitch charge to Dotson. And the count one and two. Oop, California's made another pitching change in the seventh inning in that 7-7 seven, seven tie. Oakland at bat. That's just outside to count two and two. Two balls and two strikes. Huge foul left side. Third camp at second. Got him on a good chain. Weak swing and a miss. So there's two gone. And that will bring on Mumphrey. At Houston tonight. Nolan Ryan has struck out five hitters to raise his career total to 3,595. Just too short of Steve Carlton, who has 3,597. As Jerry Mumphrey stands in, runners remain. At second and third, there's two outs in the Yankee seventh. That inside corner. It's going to be like Marquette and DePaul. You have about 37 lead changes. All in one, Dawley now pitching for Houston in the seventh inning, so Ryan is gone. A little up and in, one and one the count with Andre Robertson on deck. Now well, you're in a position right here, you still cannot give in to Mumphrey with first base open. Foul back out of play. The count moves on to one and two. And a fan over in the first row of the upper deck. Got his glove tonight, and he's got himself a souvenir. Good fastball right there by Dotson, jamming Jerry Muffrey. The Robertson will never hit. One ball and two strikes to count. I wouldn't think he'd hit at least. Down remains one and two. Still a few drops coming down, but not enough to really chase people out of the seat. Few have gone back to get a little shelter. Breeze blowing to right. Got it. You can see Fist throw the thumb up in the air. He wanted a high heater. And that's what he got. Now the Yankees are gone. No run. Not a hit. No air. Two men left to the bottom of the seventh. Doc lead it four to one. As we go to the bottom of the seventh inning, Carlton Fisk will lead it off, followed by Pashorek and Lazinski. They have some New York nostalgia on the board. Who made the last out in Don Larson's perfect game in the 1956 World Series? And a reminder, our next televised Sox game will be tomorrow afternoon as the Sox take on the Yankees in game three of this four game set at 1 p.m. Then stay tuned as we feature women's volleyball as Cuba battles the USA team at 7.30. So be sure and join us for all the action and excitement. That's tomorrow afternoon, the Sox and Yankees. And tomorrow night, women's volleyball all right here on Sports Vision, your box seat ticket to exciting Chicago area sports at home.
Carlton Fisk will lead it off. He'll be followed by Pesharek and Lezinski. Now I know that's one quiz I know the answer to because I was there sitting on the bench watching it. Yes, sir, we were talking about him last night. Hugh Alexander is the little foul as he attempted bunt. Well, Hugh was talking about how he was always beating this gentleman on the golf course. Of course, Hugh only has one hand. But he said it just made him so mad all the time. Well, if you haven't guessed Dale Mitchell by now, that's exactly who it was. Dale Mitchell made the 27th out. That's just inside. One ball, one strike. Best part of that is who was the umpire. Foul back in the count one and two. That was the last game the man umpired in the major league. A National League umpire at that, so that give you a little bit of a clue. A clue. And you can guess it was Babe Pinelli. Boy, Oakland is just killing California as they scored five in the seventh. There's a base hit left center field. Mumphrey over in a hurry. Fiscal wide turn and hold. Carlton's aboard, so the Angels got seven runs in the first inning for Bruce Keeson. And Oakland came back and scored four in the third, one in the fourth, two in the sixth, and five in the seventh to lead it 12 to seven with the Angels hitting in the bottom of the seventh inning. And that is just the first of a doubleheader. Hancock has hit his sixth and Heaton has hit his first. That is amazing. Runner goes and Pesharek fouls it back. Cotaroli started for Oakland in the knocked out in the first inning. Bergmeyer came on and he's still in there. Keeson started, followed by Curtis, Sanchez, and now Rick Steyer. And there's George Frazier. Pitch to Pashorek, bunt at third base side as Nettles makes the play and a good one. Fifth to second base. That'll be a sacrifice. 5 3. And it'll bring on Greg Luzinski. Tommy just making sure he got this one down the third base line. Nettles having to come in, barehanded it, and made a very nice throw over to Mattingly. Now Pashorek retired. Fifth to second base, and here's Greg Luzinski, another American League final. Seattle defeated Minnesota 7-3. Base hit left field. In the alley. It'll go through. Fifth will score. Luzinski to second base. It is 5-1 White Sox. jumped on first ball from Dale Murray and ripped it right out there into the gap in left center. You see the fastball bow belt high on the inner half of the plate. Trout has, of course, no problem scoring. Luzinski tonight with two RBIs. He now has 58 on the year. And here comes Chris Nyman, who was just recalled yesterday from Denver. Lorenzo Gray was sent down. He will run for Luzinski and listen to the hand. George Frazier comes on. We have a break in the action. There's one out, one on in the bottom of the seventh, and the Sox leading it five to one. 
Third Yankee pitcher of the game, big, tall, 28-year-old right-hander. He's 6'5", 200 pounds, George Frazier out of Oklahoma City. And for Frazier, this will be his 34th appearance, all in relief. You see the record and the numbers right there. He's worked in 63 and two-thirds, given up just 49 hits. Walk 27 batters, has 50 strikeouts, and he's thrown two home runs. Also, the 17 saves on the Yankee staff. He is in second place with three. So big right-hander out of Colorado, Goose Gossage, the leader with 12. So Frazier in relief of Murray, who relieved Raleigh. And the first man that Frazier will face will be Ron Kittle. Kittle has walked, struck out, line to right. He's 0 for 2 tonight. Shorek standing out at second. Uh, check that. Chris Nyman standing out at second base. As Ron Kittle gets ready to stand in. Nyman running for Luzinski. He's looking out there from up here, just glancing down. Boy, he walked around standing there looking like. Features of Shorek. All slender. Nyman, good speed. As Ken mentioned, just recently recalled of yesterday from Denver. Kittle fouling that first pitch back. On deck is Harold Bain. That breaking pitch in and over, and the count one and two. Pops him up. Shallow left. Smalley out, Winfield coming on and calling, and Dave makes the catch. There's two gone, and that'll bring on Harold Baines. There's good hustle right there by the first base umpire, Dan Morrison. He saw that ball's going to be caught. And there might be a play at second base. The second base umpire, Rocky Rowe, going out to make the call. And Morrison really hustling from first to second to make that call. There's nothing more embarrassing than a play being made and a close call at a base, and there's not a man in blue there to make the right call. Here's Baines. He is 0 for 3 tonight. Flying to left twice and struck out. He takes a strike, and the count is 0 and 1. one socks on top bottom of the seventh inning inside the count goes to one and one don't forget the afternoon game tomorrow third game of this four game series and Brett Burns will be on the mound for the White Sox Dave Rigetti young left hander who pitched a no hitter earlier in the year for the New York Yankees back to Frazier good play as he throws him out so the Sox are gone. They pick up a run and through seven, lead at 5-1. Let's go back to Dick Gunsky. As 
as we go to the top of the eighth inning. Rich Dotson out to take his warm up tosses. And after the game, seeing coach Willie Roy and Dave Houston will join Dick Gonski in the studio. Right after the game, of course, the staying defeat of the Cosmos 2 to 1. Billy Roy's 100th this week. Mike Squires taking over the first base duties from Tom Pishoik. Andre Robertson will lead it off for the Yankees here in the top of the eighth. It'll be Robertson, Mattingly, and Weiniger. One ball and no strikes to count. Robertson has bounced to third, popped to first. Jamsing. Fletcher. Little toss on to Squires, and that is out number one. And it'll bring on Don Mattingly. Mattingly tonight tripled his first time up, and then he scored on a ground ball out. He singled in the third. He struck out in the sixth. He's two for three. There's a strike in the count of 0 and 1. Burrojas and Augusto in the bullpen for the White Sox. Surely for the Yankees. One and one to count. Change right back to Dotson. On the Squires, two gone. And it'll bring on Butch Weiniger. Now it's Kevin Hickey and Salome Barojas for the Sox. Weiniger's bounced at first, walked in single. One for two tonight. Two two tie. There's a bouncer, and it's just foul. The two two ties between the Cubs and the Phillies in the second game of the doubleheader. The Cubs winning the first game four to three. And they're in the top of the eighth in California. And some heavy heads out on the West Coast. Oakland on top of the Angels 12 7. Pops him up playable. Fletcher calling law off. And Scotty makes the catch. One, two, three. The Yankees gone in the eighth. To the bottom of the eighth, the Sox lead it 5 1. If ends on Saturday, August 13th, when the hot Baltimore Orioles come to town, it'll be Kodak camera night. Fans will be invited down onto the field to take photographs of their favorite White Sox players. And, of course, it'll be sponsored by Kodak. And that's camera night, Saturday, August 13th, against the Orioles for tickets to style Ticketmaster at 559-1212, and you can use your charge card. we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. It'll be the bottom three in the order. Law, Fletcher, and Cruz. But they have done some damage tonight. Vance Law is three for three. Scott Fletcher is one for three. Julio Cruz is one for two. So they have five hits between them. Two runs scored and an RBI. They're five for eight. That's foul back and out of play. Five for eight between them. That's not bad for that bottom three in the order at all. A little high the count. One ball, one strike. Once again, that man, though, has been Carlton Fisk, Yankee pitchers. 
It was scared of him, pitched around him, walked him twice. He's one for two. Two walks, a single, and three runs scored. There's a strike in the count. One ball and two strikes. Cincinnati three to two over Houston in the top of the ninth down in the Astrodome. On deck, Scott Fletcher. And that will do it. Law is retired for the first time tonight. Good hook right here from Frazier. Oh, he just gets a little bite on this one. Overhanded Yellowhammer. But then going back to the other Sox stars, hitting stars. Greg Luzinski knocking in two. Just muscled a sacrifice fly out in the fifth and hit a sharp single in the seventh. A bullet off Dale Murray, who now has 58. And Tom Shark with a couple of big RBIs. In fact, right now, as it stands, he's got the game winner. Scott Fletcher will be the hitter. Scotty, one for three tonight. Takes a strike, and the count is 0-1. San Diego on top of Atlanta, 2-1. That's in the top of the second inning on the West Coast. On deck, Julio Cruz. One ball and one strike. And low, the count goes to two and one. strike and the count evens up at two and two now the afternoon game tomorrow and the Monday night game and as we mentioned before there will be no phone orders only for tomorrow's game because of the early time but a reminder that there are 5,000 reserve seat tickets and 9,000 general admission tickets available as Fletcher God looking so Frazier strikes out Law and Fletcher here in the eighth Another good hook right here. No worries, Scotty. That's going to get a lot of them, my man. Now there's two outs, and Julio Cruz will come on. But there will be 5,000 reserve seats, 9,000 general admission tickets still available for the game tomorrow. Jacket day, Monday night. 6,000 reserve seat tickets and 9,000 general admission. That's one half price family bargain night. And again, the Yankees in town. Left center field, Mumphrey dives. He can't make the play. Cruz is going to run and keep going. On the second, Winfield throws it back in over one cut off the end. It gets away. Cruz is trying to get him on and he can't go. He was watching instead of listening or he had a score. Julio a little upset with himself right here. As we watch it again, there he just goes out and gets it, shoots it right out there into the alley and left center. Watch Mumphrey with a diving effort. Ball gets by him, and at this point, Cruz really thought that Mumphrey was going to catch it. Didn't have that good jump coming out of the box once he got the first base. Now turned it on, and right there he's watching. Jimmy Leland saw what was happening, waved him on, but he'll be at third with a triple. Now Cruz, as I said before, turning around and looking over your shoulder, that is not the way to go. you still got to look at that coach. If he'd have listened to Jimmy Leland, he'd have scored. He knows it as Rudy Law stands in. There's only one man that could do that. And he wore number 24 and played for the Giants all of his life in the Hall of Fame, and that's Willie May. Pops him up. And Nettles will make the catch, and that will do it. Now the Sox are gone. No runs on a hit, no errors. And they leave a man aboard. We're through eight complete. The Sox leading at 5-1. There's some American League scores in the eighth. Oakland 12-7 over California. Seattle defeated Minnesota 7-3. Detroit two wins over Kansas City. 4-1, 10-1.
Baltimore over Texas 7-4. Boston over Milwaukee 10-5. Toronto 6-5 over Cleveland. Nash in the league gets 4-3. First of a doubleheader. The Cubs over the Phillies 2-2 tie in the fifth. Second game. Cardinals 3-2 over Montreal. Pittsburgh 6-3 over New York. And on at Houston, 3-2 in the ninth. Cincinnati over Houston, 2-1. The Padres over the Braves in the second. This afternoon, the Giants 8-zip over the Dodgers. 46,219 in attendance tonight as Dave Winfield will lead it off, followed by Nettles and then Gamble. 5-1, the Sox lead it. Taking a little time. Now Dave ready to go. Well, things stay the way they are. The Sox will wake up tomorrow morning four games on top in that American League West. The strike to Winfield, low and one the count. There's the pitching line on Dobson. Eight innings, a run, six hits, walk three, struck out four, while throwing 115 pitches. The low of the count, one and one. to count. Well, he just pulled a string on him right there. Winfield had no chance. Atlanta has tied the Padres in the second inning 2-2. Padres at bat, bottom of the second. Got it. Now Winfield is gone. Strike on number five for Dotson, and that will bring on Greg Nettles. Take a look at that last pitch. Just good, another good change, two in a row. Here's Nettles, who is one for two tonight. His walk bounced to first, and he singled his last time at bat. Curveball in and over. 0-1 and the count. A little bit low. The count evens up at one ball, one strike. Two more games to go with the Yankees. Tomorrow afternoon, Britt Burns and Dave Rigetti. The count goes to two and one. And on Monday night, Ray Fontenot for the Yankees. Floyd Bannister for the White Sox. Three balls and a strike to count. with a good catch and the Yankees are down to their last out and Oscar Gamble who is 0 for 3 tonight
Douglas bounced to third, bounced back to the pitcher, on in the field as choice, doesn't get the fastball. Many of the 46,000, 219, still right here. Oh, and one the count. Still throwing hard. Fans look for the strikeout. Foul back out of play. Remains 0 2. That's when you see a little blow. Now Gamble taking a little time. Here's a two strike pitch. Got him swinging. What a game by Dotson. Dotson with his third complete game of the year. The Sox make it two in a row over the Yankees. Final score. It's the Sox five, the Yankees one. Well, there's the line score on game number two. The Sox five, 12 and 0. The Yankees won six and 0. Dotson the winner, 11 and 6. Shane Raleigh took the loss. He is 9 and 9. And the White Sox make it two in a row over the New York Yankees, winning last night and tonight. A big afternoon game tomorrow, followed by another game on Monday night. A good crowd on hand tonight, 46,000 plus. And it's going to be that way again tomorrow. There's going to be a lot of fans out here. By the way, there are tickets available. There are tickets available still for Monday night. And we hope you see to see you out here. But as we said before, when you pick up the paper tomorrow morning, the Sox will be four on top. And they just keep playing steady. They apply the pressure, and all you can do right there, don't do more than what you're capable of doing. It's funny how things turn out. That was Richard Dotson tonight, no question about that. It's hard to believe that through the first five innings he could go out there like he did. He was 2 2 on 3 2 on most of those Yankee left handed hitters, and he still got out. He had to make the big pitch, and he made the big pitch. Also, some good, good hitting by Tom Pashoy tonight. Smart piece of hitting. He had two RBIs, a game winner. Greg Luzinski with two RBIs. Julio Cruz with an RBI. And Carlton Fisk, once again, a catalyst. He was only one for two, extending his hitting streak for 13 games, but he walked twice. The Yankee pitcher scared a little pitch to him a little bit, and he scored three runs. So a good, solid effort, as it was last evening, as they beat him 7-2 last night. Well, a lot of work still ahead. Two more games to go with the Bronx Bombers, and they are always tough any time that they show up. And our next televised White Sox game on Fortune will be here tomorrow night when the Sox meet the, or tomorrow afternoon, I should say, when the Sox meet the Yankees in the third game of the series. One o'clock right here on Sports Vision. It'll be Britt Burns and Dave Rigetti. Tonight's game has been brought to you in part by Budweiser Light. The best never comes easy. That's why there's nothing else like it. By your local Chrysler Plymouth dealers. And by your local Chicagoland Toyota dealers, they've got it right. Once again, the final score, the Sox five, the Yankees one. And for Ken Harrelson, I'm Doug.